An alternative to using the quadratic formula with some quadratic equations is to use the technique of completing the square. The results of this technique are similar to using the quadratic formula with some differences. In this video, we look at examples of solutions to quadratic equations that involve completing the square. Let's start with an example. The shape of a parabolic satellite dish is modeled by this equation y equals x squared minus 26x plus 120. Find the roots of this equation to find the width of the dish. To solve this quadratic equation using the technique of completing the square, recall that the square of a binomial of the form x plus a results in this expression. Notice the a terms. Starting with our quadratic, Let's write the quadratic equation for finding the roots, as shown here. We write the coefficient of the linear term as 2 times 13. If this were a perfect square, we would need a 13 squared term. So we add such a term, but also subtract the same term so as not to change the value of the left side of the equation. The expression in parentheses becomes a binomial square, and then we simplify the numerical terms. Now we can solve for x. Take the square root of both sides, and then isolate x on one side of the equation. We are left with two solutions, x equals 20 or x equals 6. This means that the width of the satellite is the difference between these two roots, or 14. Let's look at another example. The area of this triangle is 60. Solve the quadratic equation from the base and height measurements to find the dimensions of the triangle. We'll use the technique of completing the square by modifying our quadratic to include the square of a binomial. The area of a triangle is one-half the base times the height. So let's plug in the values from the triangular diagram. We end up with this formula for the area. We make that formula equal to 60, the area of the triangle. First, multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the one-half on the left side of the equation. Next, we rewrite the quadratic so that it's the square of a binomial. This means adding a 5 squared term to the expression in parentheses and subtracting that same term. We get the square binomial here, and now we simplify the numerical terms and move them all to the right side of the equation. Take the square root of both sides and we are left with two roots, x equals 6, or x equals negative 16. Only the positive root makes sense in this context, so we use x equals 6. We use this value to find the base and height of the triangle, and we get a base of 12 and a height of 10. Let's look at a final example. The area of this composite figure is 48. Using the label sides shown, Calculate the numerical measurements of all the sides of this figure. Let's first calculate the measurements of the unlabeled sides. This vertical portion is this entire length of x plus 8 minus the length of x, leaving a length of 8. This horizontal section is the sum of this length of 5 and this length of x minus 1, leaving a length of x plus 4. The area of this composite figure is this section, which is x by x plus 4, and this section, which is 8 by x minus 1. Expand both terms and combine and simplify. 
and the formula becomes this, x squared plus 12x minus 8. We make this area formula equal to 48, the desired area. We turn the x squared expression into the square of a binomial by adding and subtracting a 6 squared term. We get a binomial squared and simplify the numerical terms, resulting in the quantity x plus 6 squared equal to 92. Take the square root of both sides and solve for x. We get two roots, x equals 3.59 and x equals negative 15.59. In this context, only the positive root makes sense. We go back to the composite figure and plug in the values for x to find the measurements of all the sides of the figure.